good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all of the people joining us uh, from the UAE and beyond. And uh, today we are very, very fortunate and privileged to have uh, some excellent speakers and, and participants uh, from um, an expert area, which today is going to be about data modernization. Me as a CEO, I was asking, so what is data modernization? That would be my sort of earliest question. And uh, and really, it's about where we are today to where, in terms of where, where our data is, whether it's on Excel or in a SQL database or whatever, and moving all the way to very sophisticated modernization. That journey is, is really what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we have uh, Lawrence uh, from Microsoft. Uh, we have Christoph, and uh, we have Hello. Frank Winkler, who is joining us from Freon. And they are, all of them, uh, subject matter experts, different types of experiences and, uh, and different backgrounds. And I think uh, and that mix of skills and background is going to be really uh, quite important. So today's presentation, why is data modernization so important and the migration to the cloud? And we'll engage in, in, in this conversation uh, throughout uh, this session. And the core driver, uh, and this is very, this uh, session is very focused on what we call the small medium businesses. And they are literally from a 1 million to about $300 million worth of business. So there are some very significant players in there. A lot of them need to go through that transition and that migration process and that modernization process. That's what we'll discuss. 26% uh, uh, a faster time to market because of cloud and utilization, utilizing the various things that we have, and uh, greater than 99% in terms of uh, service level agreements. Now, I, in my research, I came across this very nice uh, report from Deloitte, uh, Deloitte Insight. And the key elements that I picked up for me, again, I'm seeing this from a business, from a user perspective as a CEO of a mid sized company. That's how I see it. Now, is data modernization driving cloud or vice versa? Uh, is the cloud both a means uh, to and a consequence of data modernization? And are they reinforcing each other? And do we need to embrace both those trends? And then 55% see data modernization as a key component uh, of or a reason for cloud migration. It's second only to security. Key questions to ask, uh, you know, purpose, why are we doing this? Tech, you know, tactical versus cultural in, in terms of the organization. What are the ideal scenarios, and what are the uh, strategies going forward? Okay, so as Tariq has mentioned, my name is Lawrence Mudoga, and I look after Microsoft's open source business in the cloud. Um, I'll touch a bit on that as we move along, uh, but in the meantime, I'm also looking after our data modernization business, and I'm honored to be here with you today, and I'm happy to take you through a bit of how Microsoft looks at data modernization. What is it? Why is it important? And why is now the best time to modernize? Um, the last two years, honestly, have been some of the most interesting years for technology, but some of the hardest years for humanity. Let's be very honest. We've had to change not only as individuals, but also as organizations. We've had to be open to remote work. Um, and I'd say a, a conference like this is a direct consequence um, of that um, I'm joining you from Kenya. Um, some people are joining from Dubai and you are everywhere across Middle East and Africa. However, 2021 brought in a new question, which was what happens next? Where do we go from here? And the most important thing was one was recovering. If you had business strategies that had slowed down or stalled, you needed to adapt and change and grow and go to the next level. But number two was our customers had changed. And this was true not just for large tech companies like us, but also for small businesses as well. Customers expected more of a digital experience. If they could use an app, it would be better because that means they can go along with their day-to-day -day lives and actually still engage with you as a business. And then also we saw a, a huge adoption of emerging technologies. In fact, one of my colleagues mentioned that the last two years have done for technology what it took 
10 years to do for the cloud, it has been a really, really massive shift across the board. And this can be quant this we can put this into actual numbers, right? We can see the rising spend in IT. We can see the fact that more and more end users are willing to spend on technology. And for me, the important question here today is how does that impact you? as a business. Allow me to put on my open source hat and share a bit about Microsoft and open source. Microsoft traditionally um, and for a very, very long time and open source have always been at loggerheads. And this has changed in the last actually 10 to 15 years with Microsoft becoming one of the largest contributors to open source. Now you might be thinking, why is this important? What does this have to do with data modernization? And the thing is, it has a lot to do with it. Why? Because we know most organizations out there are running open source databases. You have your data seated on open source technologies. And I'm happy to share that now Microsoft can support you in your open source journey in case you're looking at open source solutions. Uh, my name is Frank Winkler, and I work as a senior solution architect at Crayon in our AI center of excellence, um, where I'm helping customers realize the business value from data science and AI analytics. So we help global and local customers to get ahead in their respective markets. And I'm just taking the chance here to tell you a little bit about the latest trends in data platforms. So I hope that you will walk away with a key understanding of first, how cloud-driven Workbench empowers all your insights and analytics needs. Second of all, how it will drive adoption and data across your organization. And third, and most importantly, that you can actually start delivering this today and scale it out as required. This is the power of the cloud. Now, let's take a look at how you can actually drive value utilizing modern software offerings around the cloud. We're thinking about this in our service offerings as uh, mainly three different parts. The first one being that you first want to optimize your return on investment from existing investments. Be this license or consumption cost that you're already incurring in your business, right? We're talking about specifically uh, existing legacy systems. You just want to make sure that they drive the value in the best possible way. Second, you want to utilize the cloud to fast-pace your technology adoption and decrease the management efforts. This gives you access to the latest technologies and with a high reliability, and it reduces your headaches basically down to near zero. And third, you want to unlock the value of your data across your organization using what we call a data platform. And this drives adoption of data across your organizations and business units. It reduces time to insights for everyone working on data and it caters to all your audiences across your business, as well as tech with best in class solution, which is always nice. You know, you need to understand that first of all, you need data that you need to collect, right? Because if you don't have the data, you don't have the insights. Now, once you have the data, the question is, where do you put it? Do you store it in your Excel files where basically everybody types it in, right? And then you integrate these Excel flows across these tables. You generate more tables that read from other tables. And it can become cumbersome, right? If you want to analyze something and you don't have integrated data that you can trust because you have no way to understand how it was ingested, so written into the files initially, collected, then it's hard for people to trust the data. So whatever you want to make decisions around how to drive your business based on the insights that you've gathered from your data, then people need to move fast. So that's not the right time to make sure that you go back and you check that the data that you collect is actually valid. Today will be, first let me introduce myself. I'm the CEO of Exquitech, a company born in the cloud since 2011, focusing on uh, data modernization and Microsoft cloud services. So uh, today we will be discussing uh, quickly and briefly uh, the correlation between the modern applications and uh, whether it's uh, under Microsoft or third party applications with uh, Azure and uh, the data modernization uh, solutions that are present there. So uh, and we will discuss uh, the value of it and we have some use cases, as you mentioned, uh, if we will have time at the end to go over them, uh, practical use cases that we have done and we made use of uh, all those benefits and values that uh, Azure is uh, providing. So uh, I will start uh, first by uh, giving a quick uh, introduction about that. So uh, nowadays, as you know, uh, 
data modernization is being uh, used a lot on Azure under many umbrellas, under many solutions, uh, which we will uh, uh, be stating uh, part of them in the next slide. So uh, the value of it is that uh, today, uh, many uh, of the SMB sector and many of, of the companies are starting to use a low code system like Power Platform, which is uh, one now of the most famous uh, collaboration tools and uh, a tool to be used for digitalization, forms and workflows. So uh, we want to state the value uh, and the extended uh, value that Azure uh, data is uh, providing to this, uh, to this tool. Uh, for example, uh, when it comes to uh, many complex uh, calculations, that are happening uh, in the back end when it comes to big data being uh, centralized and being uh, integrated with many systems, whether uh, under Microsoft or any uh, third party systems. Uh, we are using data modernization on Azure to collect this data under a data warehouse on Azure and under a database. And then we are performing all the uh, calculations and the complex calculations using Azure functions and cognitive services. Uh, talking about, uh, you know, doing data as a service trying to yeah. find uh, that that whole philosophy of how we can uh, accelerate and simplify to make sure that people start coming on board mm -hmm. um i mean that from our experience it's the most important thing to make sure that the business case drives the development towards the cloud but if you look at data, a lot of companies have been ongoingly collecting information. But you know that collecting information, if it's not from an automated system that just provides data to you, like for example, if you have a web page and you collect click streams, right? You might just do this, it's an offload, it really, you know, set it once up and you hope to understand what you people are doing in real time on your on your web presence. That's one thing. It's easy to do. It just costs you money to store, but that's pretty simple and cost efficient. But if you actually have to invest human power to generate data by collecting it in, in some kind of a manual process, then of course you really want to make sure that you collect data that's relevant. So we always advocate start out with understanding your business problems and how data can relate to that. Uh, in the context of what is open source, uh, uh, and, and what does it actually mean? Because we've been talking about a lot of products, uh, which is fine, but what is open source and what does it actually mean? Whenever I say open source, my hand almost naturally goes like this. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm praying for something. <laughs> so open source technology, and I'll, I'll use it as a technology paradigm. Open source technology ideally is technology that is built by community, meaning it is open to contribution. Um, and so you have pieces of software out there that are built by core developer. So let's say Lawrence comes up, put something together, but then it is open to other developers to come in and also add their code and make it better. And the good thing is open source technology is all around us. Um, for example, most of the software that's running on your TV is open source. Um, if you're using an Android device, Android, the operating system, originally was open source and still is open source. And the beautiful thing with open source software is it ends up being more secure because it is open. People can see the code that's there, but it also ends up receiving a lot of features that can cover a wide base of use cases. Why? Because you will have developers from all over the world with different ideas for what they want that piece of software to be actually coming back in and contributing to it, which is why for me, open source software is so it's it's amazing. It's beautiful. So where do you Most make the money? Where do you make the money? <laughs> okay, so where do you make money from open source? That's actually a very good question. There are two ways. I'll, I'll point it from the Microsoft side and how you can make money as an organization. So we do have organizations out there that provide support for open source technology. A very, very good example is Red Hat. Red Hat provides enterprise support for Red Hat uh, Enterprise, so Linux Enterprise. So they literally take Linux, they add some enterprise features to it, and then they make money by providing support and licenses to go in and support that. Number two is depending on the license, which allows you to use that open source software, you can actually add your own features and resell. And this is true for very many pieces of software. It's how a lot of organizations make money from a base free app, go in, add features and resell it.
Uh, what I've seen uh, when I go to uh, teams out there, the SMBs uh, out there, they're saying, well, what I've got today, just, just don't touch that and build something on the side. Uh, and then migrate it. In other words, don't mess with what I've got because I've built a $100 million business uh, with my current stuff. And now what you're going to say is I can optimize, I can save costs, I can future-proof you, I can build on the future, all of those elements. Those are the things you're selling. So how does this two-step process happen? Yeah, I want to uh, first, uh, Lawrence, uh, thank you for the open source. You convinced me. I, I wasn't a fan of an open source, so... <laughs> You're, you're very good at convincing people for the open source, so we'll definitely look into it. Uh, I will start by uh, Tarek telling you about, uh, because also I saw I saw a question uh, uh, from from uh, Mariam about uh, the ease of use and, and uh, asking about what are the major uh, repercussions for companies who are not ready to implement this today. So, uh, my answer for you and for Mariam is that the beauty of, of, of the data modernization in Azure is also in its simplicity. So it's 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 very, very simple now uh, with the tools that we have in hand uh, to, uh, to 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 implement this. It's very easy to to implement through uh, power platforms, through power automate, uh, through Azure, Azure data factory uh, to make use of this data, integrate systems among each other, especially when we talk about Power Automate, where we can we can create a workflow. Any any person, even uh, not necessarily a, a developer or or a, a technical person, can just go and through a very easy user interface, build his own uh, process, uh, get data from a certain system, and then uh, just uh, pull it and centralize it within uh, Azure uh, SQL or Azure Postgre or or any any other source. Uh, if we go also for data analysis, uh, where companies, you're saying that companies have may, maybe invested a lot of money in many systems and they don't want to touch that. Uh, yes, they don't want to touch that, but they want to understand what's happening behind those systems. Those data that they were uh, kind of collecting for the last uh, uh, years, they want to understand and to forecast and to make use of that. So nowadays with, with, power, with tools like Power BI, with, with many other tools, you can just create your own reports. They call them self-service BI system where you can just come, collect the data from, from SQL, from, from Azure, and just create your own dashboard. So it's very easy to use. It's very simple to use. And this is the beauty of it. I think it's a wonderful way to uh, uh, end your comment is that it is now accessible to everyone and uh, no company is too small or too big to be able to utilize that and compete. So it's actually democratization of business and of competition. And I find that very close to, to my heart that any company can now compete with the biggest out there because we have the facilities of the cloud and all of the other facilities that we looked at to get us to that particular point. Lawrence, my open source man, tell us <laughs> and help us go on the road. Okay, so I, I won't repeat everything that has been said. So allow me to end this with a, with a, with a, with a stupid short story. Um, in Kenya, there's something called the Elephant Highway. Um, where elephants leave the Abadares and travel to Mount Kenya about twice a year. Um, and I grew up near the Elephant Highway. And there are three things you learn about elephants uh, very, very early. Number one is elephants love sugarcane. So don't plant sugarcane near there. They will camp in your farm. <laughs> Two is elephants love watermelon. Oh my goodness. They, they literally will camp at your farm. And three, don't ask me how I know this but elephant meat is tough. So when we say don't try and eat the whole elephant, trust you me, we mean it. So <laughs> as you start your data journey, don't try and eat the whole elephant because I've tried, you can't. It is tough meat. So please use the solution assessment link that's been provided. Reach out to Christoph, reach out to Tarek. The resources are all there. And I wish you all the best in this data journey. And again, it's change management. You'll slowly adapt as an organization. And I'd like to say a big thank you for attending this and a big thank you to Tarek and team for having us. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Lawrence, for the wonderful story that you ended with. Uh, I thank all the people who attended. Francisco, who supported us all the way through. Christoph was working there. 
And I think one of the important takeaways for me now on, on the same uh, amusing note is we have to be careful with our melons and our sugar cane. So <laughs> we have to make sure that we don't throw too much, too much at people so that they are able uh, to absorb everything that we have to offer. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen who have attended. And uh, all the best. Uh, we'll see you soon. All the best. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye. Yes, bye. -bye. bye. Yes, bye.